Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, carbon-14 dating is a completely wrong. And I will, I can stand behind this and I will talk with anybody, uh, Michio Kaku or all of these guys that are saying things that they don't understand what they're saying. And here's why. Carbon-14 is supposed to be a way, radiocarbon, radioactive carbon, is supposed to be a way to, de to determine how old something is. Now, how could they use it? Well, how would that determine something? Here's the deal. Nitrogen in our atmosphere. Here's nitrogen. You see this? There's nitrogen. All right. They say that if cosmic radiation blasts that nitrogen and hits it with all this cosmic radiation, it can drop it down almost to carbon, which is 12. It can make a 14 out of it. And then the 14 is radioactive, so it only lasts a certain while. They call that the half-life, and it will eventually get down to carbon-12. So the amount of carbon-14 that is in the air right now is, is determined by how much nitrogen turns into carbon-14. So let's say, there is a, let's say it's 100 parts per million. That's fine. I can go along with that. No problem whatsoever. However... The second part of carbon radio dating is it says when an animal or plant dies, it stops exchanging carbon with the environment. It's just locked in there, they think. And therefore, the amount of carbon-14 it contains begins to decompose, decrease, as the C-14 undergoes radioactive decay. So C-14 isn't quite stable. It gives off some more. It gives off some more. So there's going to be a less and less quantity of it if it was totally encapsulated. I can buy that. This is not true whatsoever. Animals die. They are completely saturated with moisture most of the time. The things that they're digging out, they had moisture in them, no question whatsoever. And that makes carbon just go all over the place. It's one of the most, it's, it's unbelievably how they could have missed this. I just can't imagine what's going on here. You see, this, this is a nucleophilic substitution. I've been talking about it for years. Because when they find bones of animals, they're usually not bones. They're now mostly transitioned into mineral um, stone, basically. So, and that's due to this nucleophilic substitution reactions. are a class of reactions which an electron-rich nucleophile attacks a positively charged electrophile, and it replaces it. Uh, and then the leaving group goes. So there's a, a, an invasive group and a leaving group. And guess what? The most reactive nucleophile is C6 carbonoxalate group. That's carbons. They're carbon everywhere. Listen to this. List of carboxylic acids. These are all organic acids. They're acids that are made by life. And when they're in moisture, it's called an aqueous solution, and here is what it, co it causes. It causes capillary action. Here it is right here. Capillary action is within these, these body parts. They still have all their little tiny tubings. Capillary action is the process of a liquid flowing in the narrow spaces within the, uh, without the assistance of or even opposition to any external forces like gravity. They just it wicks it through there. Just like you take a rag and you put it in a... And it, same thing with these things. When I put water on my mud fossils, it's, they go right in there almost instantaneously. There's so many tiny little vessels in there. So to say that carbon fixes in a dead creature when they die and it never leaves, that's insanity. Literal insanity. Okay, this is by uh, the uh, University of New South Wales, I think it is. Um, and it is, it's a very nicely done documentary about the problem we're in with Earth's climate change. However, the the fact that they're talking about carbon dating is totally wrong. Listen to what it has to say. They're talking about ancient trees. They're using those with carbon dating to say that 42,000 years ago these things happened. I don't agree with that whatsoever, 42,000 years ago. I say it was much, much, much more recently by a huge factor. So it's a bit of a geological and archaeological whodunit. Before this work, we knew there was a lot of things happening around the world at 42,000 years ago, but we didn't know precisely how. And so this work has been coming together, bringing these ancient cowrie trees from New Zealand, which have been buried in wetlands, 
Taking them out of the ground. Oh, uh, you hear that? Buried in wetlands. They are continuously flowing through there. Capillary action. The, the, the carbon is not not fixed whatsoever. You will have a, a degree of carbon that will be throughout all of these things will be pretty much the same because they're all being invaded by the same stuff. But if you went down a street in an area where it was much higher up and there weren't in the wetlands, then the carbon content would be totally different because it wouldn't have so many invasive actions going on there. It would be very slowly moving. But even the ones that are just in the air, they will also have their carbon changed just by carbon dioxide. And in analyzing for the radiocarbon content in the rings. So for the first time, we've been able to actually precisely date what happened when the Earth's magnetic fields last flipped. Whoa. All right, that's the one that I'm looking into next is the magnetic field flip. That's a whole nother issue. But now that we've established this carbon dating just doesn't work. So forget about that in geology anymore. It doesn't make any sense. And geology has been changed. There is no more geology. There is um, biology. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it, biology. Because it's bio biology and geology at the same time. Biology, got it? And everybody will say, by golly, that's amazing, by golly. All right, here it is. Just, this was just updated a few days ago, March 2022. Updated the 26th of March 2022. And then they talk about radiocarbon dating and the creationists are making up stories to, <clears throat> to discredit it. And it's very high popularity and views a number of doubtful assumptions, some of which are sufficiently serious to make its results for all ages exceeding <clears throat> two to 3,000 years in serious need of revision. I agree with that 100%. Now, they go on to sort of poo-poo it. Oh, let's look into this. He could be right. Yes, oh, absolutely. And then at the bottom they say, it's used to reliably date specimens less than approximately 50,000 years old. So you can't go past that. But under that, oh, they know absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. If one of them in his aqueous solution and one of them is in a dry area, even though they died the same day, Totally different outcomes with carbon-14, 100% different.